Hello and welcome to Raj Sabha Television. I am Akhilesh Suman and you are watching Indian Standard Time. Indian Standard Time is a window to the world through which we try to understand a global phenomena or a country specific issues. And here with me, a very special guest, Mr. Virendra Sharma, member of parliament in Britain, Labour Party, and he is also chairperson of Indo-British All-Party Parliamentary Group. Welcome, Mr. Sama. Thank you very much, uh, Akhleshji, uh, for taking me on. Welcome, sir. Sir, we are living in Corona time, and you know, Britain is one of the most affected, worst affected countries in the world. So, what is the situation of COVID-19 in Britain nowadays? I think that we are part of the global uh, right. disaster. It's not. Uh, uh, in isolation is happening. Uh, it is uh, unexpected. Uh, there's a lot of uh, criticism of the system uh, that we miss the opportunities to tackle it earlier. Uh, and uh, we had now nearly 37 plus thousand uh, deaths so far. That's uh, right. Many other criticism that PPEs was not available, whether uh, there was a mistake or a failure. Uh, it's a debate. Uh, I'm in the opposition of the government, so I will be saying it's the government failure, and the government will say, no, it's not the failure. But we feel it very strongly on the ground level that there's a lot of mistakes made by the system uh, in the last few months, and that's why we have so many deaths. But, sir... How did it reach UK? United Kingdom is the, not the country where coronavirus came in the beginning. It came later. How did it reach UK? What do you think? If you look at that, as everybody accepts it, that it originated from China. Right. From China, there's a large number of Chinese uh, business come employment or relationship between India and China. Right. And that is why a lot of uh, uh, cases came originally in Italy. Right. Being part of the European Parliament, there was a lot of uh, traffic mm -hmm. uh, exchanges between Italy and uh, Britain. Uh, that is the route people believe it happened. And because we were slow in tackling it, right. uh, and uh, the, that's why there was a large impact of uh, coronavirus. Uh, on many uh, residents in the country. So, as you are saying that, many people say like that, uh, that, uh, you know, once uh, China was knowing that uh, coronavirus is transferring from human to human, so don't you think that China should have uh, alerted the whole world and also stop people from China going to many other countries? Of course, I mean, I myself suffered with the coronavirus. Right. Uh, I was oh. admitted to the hospital. I was there in the early days, uh, but I recovered. Uh, everybody now believes and accepts it, that it, whether it was a mistake on Chinese uh, part or it was a deliberate, that's a debate going on in the global politics. All that right. whether the Chinese government or Chinese scientists failed to alert the rest of the world that it might have made some impact on the human beings outside China. Uh, that is uh, what is the debate uh, We sitting in Britain and outside China will be saying, yes, uh, China should have played their responsible part, which they missed it, uh, to alerting the rest of the world that this is happening and they should be careful and then find the ways so that it cannot, it should not spread. Uh, I, I think that China and the Chinese government let it go as it is. And right. that's why it spread outside. The, not many people were prepared uh, for that. And that's right. why uh, we have lost large number of uh, uh, innocent people right. Uh, right. in the world. They lost their lives and the families now suffering. Right, sir. Is this uh, understanding, is a bipartisan understanding in Britain that uh, China somehow or other uh, should 
have understood it earlier and alerted the world and it's uh, it should be you know seen in a different way than the china itself is seeing itself uh, if you uh, follow the debates in britain yeah it, directly and indirectly yeah everybody blames china everybody believes it and they also question chinese intentions on that whole idea there was some hong kong uh, uh, said that it is a deliberate the other saying is not a deliberate so this is where the uh, some investigation will go people will start talking about it it will be government to government level it will be profession to profession level to identify where it happened why it happened what were the motives behind but right. it's very early days it's very early days uh, uh, we don't have any vaccination so far we don't have any uh, proper medicine for that so everybody is now spending their time and energies on the basis that we need to find the remedy for the disease right. Right. and uh, then they will start talking about wh- where the failures and where the mistakes were done so what there any debate in british parliament regarding coronavirus or parliament is not in session now no no uh, though the parliament is not in session for the last couple of weeks uh, right. every day uh, one way or the other you mm. talking about the economy you talking about the social uh, services in the society you talking about the employment you talking about the housing then everything comes around coronavirus uh, every business is stopped movements has been stopped Uh, there's no move in the economy right. uh, so the uh, impact of the coronavirus is it not only uh, dying is also the uh, issue of uh, general economy and the prosperity of the country now is the time will come which is every government i'm sure indian government also uh, looking at whether the uh, lockdown should be stopped or Uh, open it right. we are talking about uh, government wanted that how long you can sit at home and be depend upon uh, the 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 system uh, i i won't say that uh, that everybody is at home for prayer or for their own wish uh, but there is a, a no proper salary coming no, no uh, interaction outside Uh, there is no development or the growth in the economy due to the uh, uh, this virus so it is the global issue which is now every government is now considering it how best we can stop and open the market so that people can go out people can uh, spend money right. uh, business can grow Uh, and also the international relationship can develop has there any voice in china, um, uk uh, any political party i know the conservative conservative party that you know damage should be given by china the damage on the economy in britain that has taken place there is a uh, on the corner uh, there is a dialogue why is not huge campaign started Right. as i said earlier on that everybody is focusing at this uh, time how to come back into the market how to make sure that the people build their confidence to go into the field right. how the confidence amongst the parents the workers the government and the system uh, that is the first the confidence building is the exercise everybody need to start right once they start then there will be a debate later on once you have Uh, come back into the full flow in the okay. bar, in the uh, market to say that uh, where it was uh, done what damage was done whether it is the chinese government has to pay back there some i'm not saying there's no dialogue on it right but people are but majority people are not focusing on that at this stage at present is how best we can come back into the market whether And, you are in uh, uh, britain or any other country right sir you yourself is a victim of you know covid 19 how how did you feel that how it caught you i, I mean it's very difficult to say right but that when i had the symptoms 
Uh, I was advised to go into isolation at home, which I did uh, oh, after a what week. What symptom on you? It's a, just cough, then headache, some temperature, uh, okay. breathless happening, breathing problem. Okay. Uh, and uh, then after a week, I was I went to the hospital for a checkup, and okay. then they diagnosed. So I, I, as I said, it was very early days, and I was fortunate one that okay. I did go to the uh, hospital uh, at the right time, uh, and I recovered quicker. Uh, then I am at home now and uh, still, uh, I'm not saying recovering, but uh, I'm taking all the precautions on that. Uh, right. But it was not a pleasant experience. Right, sir. When you were in hospital, what type of medication you were going on? There was no medication. There was no there medication. Was oxygen and uh, because there's no medication for this. They're right. just giving you the painkillers, uh, giving you uh, some oxygen. Uh, right. So that you don't go breathless, uh, they're putting some kind of antibiotics on you. Uh, okay. There was no, it's a, it's a very normal uh, exercise so that your lungs can start working more effectively. Uh, that was the main issue uh, they, they were looking after. Uh, and uh, I, I, I'm so glad that uh, uh, they looked after me well so that I'm still alive at home. Uh, you, you, your national health system is considered to be one of the best systems in the world. But how national health system works this? I mean, national health services for everybody. Uh, uh -huh. uh, so that's where uh, they, there's a criticism of the government. Right. Whether the NHS had enough resources available to them. Mm. And that's what the main criticism the present government have, that they failed to provide PPEs, they failed to provide uh, uh, masks, they failed to provide enough uh, general uh, caring uh, staff there, uh, where the nurses were shortage, doctors shortage. And there was people who worked, uh, the doctors or the frontline staff who worked for five, six days and nights together, uh, continuously. So. There was a shortage of that, and uh, I think the government has learned the lesson, and they will be looking into it, and uh, we in the opposition will be raising these issues again and again, so that NHS is not starved uh, for resources. They should be fully equipped. And you must be knowing that these PPEs or testing kits, they were all getting imported from other countries. It was not in, uh, in the British, British system. British system. That is where... This was going well. Uh, you have the international trade. You thought uh, you you look at it where it is cheaper to get it from. Right, right. That I said I, I hope the government of Britain has learned their lesson that you cannot depend upon uh, the resources from outside the country. You have to make sure that you are self-sufficient internally rather than depend upon outside or externally. So or that's where... Or uh, at least we, the basic things. Everything. You, okay. you don't need to be. Uh, these PPEs, masks and other things should be uh, available for everybody. You don't wait for the disaster and then start looking at right, it. Right, right. That's where the government failure is recognized. And a lot of people, both not party political, uh, or on, in all political parties, uh, accepts that, that it was a failure, but it's not uh, the blame culture. It is the actual genuine questions are raised. And uh, the government has to think seriously that they have to provide all these resources to the NHS and the other frontline staff, uh, make them available so that they can continue providing the services the society and the community needs. So you are quite an experienced, uh, you know, member of parliament, politician. And do you think that uh, this uh, post-corona period uh, will be a period when countries will start looking more inwards than looking outwards? Like, you know, that international trade, international manufacturing system had been you know, centered in one country or two countries and every country was importing from the, that country. So do you think there is really a change in mindset in the world, at least? I, I believe it that uh, now we are in a global market. 
you cannot get out of it. Right. You have to work globally. As uh, you can see, the communication skills are changing, work uh, practices are changing. And I believe that though you have to be self-sufficient internally, mm. but you will be still dependent upon outside each other. Uh, but make sure that it, these are the necessities that you have in place uh, rather than waiting for the last minute. Uh, so I think that that global market, global economy, global exchanges working together in partnership will continue, but maybe the pattern will change. Uh, no, my, my question is also like, uh, you know, the whole Western world, even Italy or Germany, maybe I leave Germany, but Italy, Britain, uh, USA, they were all making, you know, high technology things. The technology that can be applied for common things, uh, common utility of the people, they were not being manufactured inside these countries. It was outsourced to either China, to Vietnam or many other countries. So do you think that British uh, should start thinking that they should manufacture basic utility things also? I think that Britain has already started on those lines. Really? Uh, yes, just because if you look at uh, uh, now the PPEs are made here, uh, mm. masks are made here, and other equipments are made here, uh, so that they can com uh, uh, complete the gap. Ventil uh, but I Ventilators? I beg pardon? Ventilators. Yeah, everything. They, mm. they, they have small scale have started it okay. because they now realize it that you cannot depend upon. Like mm. they had some uh, orders made to China and it's coming through Turkey. There was delays in Turkey. They, it, the the uh, equipments could not reach here in time. There right. was a monthly delay. They cannot afford to have. They have to have the stock. But right. that culture also has to move where the cheap labor is that your exploitation is so that you are exploited in Bangladesh or in right. uh, Vietnam or Brazil or other places and right. then uh, bring it here. Uh, I think that lesson has learned, not by Britain or every country, but then they have to look at that, that they are they sufficient internally? If not, then how can they store and get the stuff from outside before anything happens. They're the basic needs, and they have to have those equipments and the resources uh, available so that they don't have to, uh, at the time of disaster, uh, they, they, they have to run around. Sir, you are an Indian. You have ancestry in India. Uh, you are from Punjab, Jalandhar district, as you told me. How do you think that India should learn from this crisis? Though so death rate in India is very low in comparison of many other countries in the world, uh, but uh, you know the whole tilt uh, towards other countries for everything. Uh, so do you think that India should also learn some lesson from this COVID crisis? I, 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 as, I, as you said that uh, I'm a, of Indian origin. Uh, I came here. I still have the passion for India right. uh, to build up those relationships and strengthening those relationships so that right. uh, we don't miss and lose our roots and right. where we come from. The values we were given, we need to take it. I, I think the whole world has learned their lessons uh, right. after the virus, uh, uh, coronavirus uh, uh, epidemic. Uh, they, everybody have learned. And they have to understand how best they can have their system in place so that not only uh, overcoming this uh, the disease now, but certainly in the future, the communication skills, transport, hygiene, health and safety issues, they have to look at all these uh, and also to prepare the population for that by educating them, by uh, encouraging them, I don't think that you can force anything, these things. No, I'm, need... I'm asking something India-specific, that you are yeah. you, you yeah. are Indian, you are British, both you are. So you can understand that what India should do post-corona period in society, in, in uh, you know, in many other fields. That's what I'm saying, that you have to uh, pick up all those areas, which is the precautionaries, but you need to develop that from the childhood to the 
later ages as well. So don't leave it because the child in the school, uh, in the village, at home, need to pick these up. This should be, have become now uh, part of your life. Don't take it. Uh, I, I know that sometimes health and safety issues, hygienic issues. I want uh, to be more specific on this. Thing. There is no, no harm if you tell me something to learn from Bipin. I, I, I feel it that uh, I'm one of those people who believes uh, right. not telling uh, unnecessarily. Right. Uh, but I'm sure that there's 135 whatever uh, millions of people uh, or billion, 1.3 billion people living in India, more intelligent. We are one of those people who left India and now don't want to dictate and tell India what is going wrong or right. Uh, but uh, I support uh, uh, whatever the practices uh, they adopt. If it is in internationally in human practices, I will definitely question that. But uh, administrative decisions, educate improvement in education, improvement and other social interactions, uh, I, I think I, I will leave to them uh, to follow it up. But I internationally, I believe that we need to pick up those new ways of life, uh, which we have learned now as communication skills. Now, what we are talking uh, today, uh, three, four months ago, it was not very common. Do you, in, you want to say something about change in uh, common people's behavior in post-corona period? I think that uh, it is international again. I, right. I'm not uh, taking it that India is different from Britain. Uh, what's India uh, on uh, hygiene level, uh, providing the services uh, as equal as Britain? Uh, but there are the ways uh, which you can change uh, and follow the given instructions. Uh, we in Britain living uh, when coronavirus came, uh, the issues with the students, issues with the other uh, uh, homeless people, the shortage of food. Uh, Indians has uh, contributed hugely. Uh, that's what is happening in India as well that wherever there is the poverty and uh, short of uh, food and uh, accommodation, uh, the communities has come out to provide that. And we need to do that more often than actually at the disaster time. In, in Britain, sir, uh, is the coronavirus some community specific or that uh, some particular communities are getting affected more than other communities or it is, uh, you know, equal in every community? No. no. If you look at the population point of view, right, right. with that ratio, the black and the minority communities, which including the Indian, Pakistanis and others, right. uh, died more proportionately than the white population. So it means that there is already a debate going on that why more black and minority people are dying. Uh, there's no clear uh, uh, picture out of it. Certainly, the discussions have started that more black and minority people died than proportionately uh, than the white people. So white that's where affected, affected affected people. They are both are affected. Yeah, uh, there's white and the black. Everybody is affected. Affected. But, but yes, affected. Then died. Right. Right. So it's a uh, proportionately black and minority people are more affected and died than the white people. But the, Our, treatment, but the treatment facilities available was equal for everybody? Yes, yes. NHS is equal to everybody. NHS okay. is not a, a discriminatory on the doorstep and say, uh, that is what the beauty uh, of no other NHS services or any other health services has provided that. That at the gate when you come to the hospital, uh, you are immediately treated on that. Uh, and uh, uh, so that's where no discrimination. I do not take. Individuals may discriminate uh, how they treat each other, uh, but the system uh, in NHS is not discriminatory. Uh, people who arrive, they arrive as patient. They don't arrive as black and white people. How, how were Indian groups helping Indians? Were, were there Indian groups who were helping the rest of the Indians in Britain? No, it's not. This is the beauty. 
Indians living in Britain are not only looking at the Indian people suffering. Right. When they provide food, they provide at the hospital and hospital distribute it. Mm. So uh, when you are on the doorstep, when you got the, the list of people uh, who come to the Gurdwara's uh, front gate or the mosque or the mandir's front gate mm -hmm. and they provide the food irrespective of your race, color or creed. Mm -hmm. That's the beauty. But a large number of Indians and the Asian people has offered and that is well recognized uh, amongst the, all the sections of the society, including the government, that Indian community has given shelter, food, and the financial help to the NHS and to the people who are suffering, who needs it uh, at the time of uh, this coronavirus. How was the uh, attitude of uh, Indian High Commission in London? Very uh, supportive. Uh, I work very closely with the Indian High Commission. Uh, right. we, we were talking about uh, many Indian students uh, in Britain who wanted to go back. Right. Many visitors to Britain who were stranded here during this period, uh, getting the Air India uh, charter flights arranged talking to through the Indian High Commission. I'm on a very regular contact with them so that the people uh, who are who wanted to go to India, the students and those visitors here. And also at the same time, there was many British citizens and the people living in Britain were stranded in India. The, we negotiated or put pressures on uh, British government to have the charter flights and the Indian government cooperated with that. Uh, I'm on a very regular in touch with yeah, right. the uh, central government as well as through the uh, Indian High Commission talking about uh, Indians stranded on the both sides. Indians, right. British Indians uh, stranded in India, in Ahmedabad, right. in Bangalore or Delhi or uh, Punjab and the nearest uh, uh, airport Amritsar or people wanted to go back from Britain to uh, India. So there is a very close links and working relationships uh, with the Indian High Commission and the Indian government. Uh, my last question is uh, that uh, according to your knowledge, how India and UK are cooperating to find any vaccine or any treatment or any medicine against the coronavirus? One is the most important. The whole world is working on it. Right. It's not only Britain. It's not only Every government is concerned about it and they are working together and supporting each other. <clears throat> I believe that. And I, I, I have noticed it, uh, that they wanted to find a solution, a remedy uh, from this virus so that no more deaths. Uh, and once the medicine is found, the confidence will build. Until that, the people will not have the full confidence because they will be scared of the fear in the minds. Eh? And it's always very dangerous, fear of the unknown. You don't know what is going to happen when you leave. So uh -huh. I think that every government, Indian government and the British government have very historically and working relationships are always very high. Interaction between the scientific and other uh, 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 institutions are working together. And I'm quite confident that the countries will find a solution to the problem. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Virendra Sarma. Thank the you. Member of Parliament. Uh, I wish uh, best of luck for both India and Britain to fight the coronavirus crisis. Same here. Best of luck and thank you very much and look forward to seeing you again. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We will okay. talk about, you know, Parliament issues also later sometime.